Warm-up is commonly claimed to reduce injury risk. In sports science, neuromuscular warm-up, a very specific form of warm-up, has shown to prevent injuries, reduce injury risk and enhance performance. Hundreds of studies investigated thousands of athletes, mostly using randomized controlled trials, which are the highest level of evidence for such purposes. Neuromuscular warm-up is designed to target aspects which are not or not sufficiently covered in the main training of athletes. That is one of the reasons why it has turned out to be so injury preventive and performance enhancing, aspects which mostly go together. Neuromuscular warm-up complements training. Warming up, as the name says, aims to increase body core temperature, should neither exhaust nor injure, but mentally and physically prepare for performance. To do so, intensity has to be raised gradually and the exercises have to be chosen accordingly, targeting the very needs of the dancer. At best, it is divided into at least two blocks, namely general and specific warm-up. Both serve two different parts. The general warm-up, as the name says, basically raises body core temperature. At best, this starts with exercises where the joints don't bear weight, or at least not too much. As such, synovial fluid in the joint capsules can be massaged most efficiently into the cartilage, thickens them, and thus makes the cartilage resistant against impacting forces acting upon a dancer at work. The specific warm-up, as the name says, wants to prepare specifically for exactly the impact of an upcoming training or performance an athlete or a dancer needs to be prepared for. There is scarce evidence on warm-up in dance or other aesthetic sports which might mirror the status of warm-up in those fields. Commonly, in traditional dance practice, stretching is regarded as warm-up and it's very often done on cold body, followed by dance technical exercises. Both are not ideal. Stretching on cold body bears injury risk, doesn't warm up, and can decline strength and power performance, especially when stretch positions are held for a longer period of time. And dance technical exercises in themselves are already a high load for the body. They should therefore only be done when somebody is sufficiently warmed up, but not as warm up themselves, because they might already in themselves be a factor in the high number of overuse injuries in dancers. However, basically we don't really know much about dancers' warm-up habits. So, in order to find out what dancers actually do with their warm-up and how warm-up might be related to injuries, an international pilot study has recently investigated warm-up in ballet dancers. My team and I have studied the warm-up in 192 ballet dancers with the aim to document their habits, but also investigate whether there is an association between the way and the use of warm-up and their injuries. This study could show that those dancers who performed exercises which are used in neuromuscular warm-up programs had significantly less overuse injuries than the dancers who performed traditional ballet specific warm-up based on stretching and technical exercises or the bar. I have investigated and analyzed the warm-up programs done in sports science and designed neuromuscular warm-up programs for dancers. Several possibilities exist to structure a general and a specific warm-up specifically for dancers. The general warm-up, as always, should raise body core temperature. It could be done by swinging, bouncing or others, especially exercises which start without bearing weight. Specific neuromuscular warm-up targets proprioception and sensory motor control. As such, alignment for example, closing eyes in alignment, which specifically prepares for proprioceptive and sensory motor control. Specific neuromuscular warm-up also aims to improve strength and power training in dancers. There is a lot more to learn about warm-up and neuromuscular warm-up specifically. You are welcome to join any of my courses, lectures or seminars or read my books.